semifinal match uh, between the fourth, sheen, fourth seed, uh, Shane Riemann, against the fifth seed, William Yu. Uh, we have Phoenix uh, versus Crab going on here. Um, take a look here at William's Crab deck, uh, Phoenix deck. Sorry, I didn't introduce uh, Tony. <laughs> hey, it's Tony here, JD Sauce on Jagoku. Yeah, you were playing. You were playing yesterday. Uh, what were you playing again? I was playing Scorpion. Scorpion. Yeah. Okay, bring yourself up to the mic. So yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. yeah. yeah, Shane was actually one of my opponents, and I know William pretty well. He's uh, he's got he's been working on this Phoenix deck for a while. Um, he's gonna be running Scorpion Splash, as you guys can see, and obviously one of the best cards in the game. Fate Worse and Death got two of them in there. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, so one of the things we were we were talking about yesterday because we had William on camera. He was playing against Carl. Okay. And it was a Phoenix mirror match. And uh, Car the way Carl built his deck and the way William built his deck are very different because Carl is more like a. Uh, it's it's more of the. Um, I don't know if you remember the Phoenix unicorn deck that won a Greek tournament a few months ago. Yeah, I took a look at that. Yeah. It, it was basically like a dragon deck, except it, it used uh, it used Phoenix characters like Prodigy of the Waves and just a bunch of big guys, and you put a bunch of attachments on them. Uh, by contrast, William seems like a much more of a Shigenja spell deck, I guess. That's right. It's going yeah. for the big draws and right. um, having the, I guess, the big protection for g uh, for a lot of his moves. Yeah, so, yeah. for g I think it would be a, is a surprising uh, a card, I think, to put in, uh, in a Phoenix deck, because I don't think a lot of people would see it coming, right? Yeah, uh, that's a big thing. I think it's a, a surprise move from him. Oh, look. Should we... Uh, yeah. Adjusting the dials, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, good opening plays from both players right now. You know, obviously with the palace on Shane's side, that's a really good flop. Um, but you know, alternatively on on uh, William's side, he's got the library going, and he's got the uh, the Kanjo district, yeah, which Kanjo is district. the primary reason why he even runs uh, Mia Satoshi. So, it's gonna be tough. Well, I mean, that's not a good draw turn one though. <laughs> Turn one, it's a little <laughs> tough, but, yeah. uh, but I mean, in terms of the setup, that's ideally what he wants. Like uh, at least, you know, turn two onwards. So, so I, I, we haven't touched on uh, Shane's deck, but uh, just very briefly, I'm going to bring it up. Uh, Shane's deck, it's it's a very classic kind of uh, crab unicorn deck. Very defensive with the Talisman of the Sun, spy glasses. Uh, you know, the combo obviously is you put spy glass on a guy that with the mountain does not fall or you have something like a Steadfast Witch Hunter. Mm -hmm. So uh, as we saw yesterday, the way Shane plays his deck, he bids very low constantly. I mean, this one is different. He just bid five on turn one. But in subsequent turns, the plan generally is to bid very low uh, to put honor pressure on your opponent, you know, with the Watch Commander and all that. And then uh, hopefully you've drawn a bunch of your alternate draw methods, like the uh, Caillou Envoy, um, Imperial Storehouse. Uh, he's also running the Mia Satoshi Keeper Initiate package. Yeah, I well. saw three of right. them. That Very was surprising. Grindy. Yeah. I guess he really wants his Karata District or uh, I guess even the Imperial Palace. Up. I played him yesterday. Yes. Yeah. Good deck. Um, like you said. Right. He's got a lot of good tools. Okay, so it looks like the first conflict of the game is going to be a military conflict with the Caillou Envoy. Yep. On the Void, it's Void on the Kanja District, and I think that looks like, uh, I can't tell what that is. Public Forum was the province that got revealed. Yeah, so not the greatest flip, I'm sure, when Shane's looking at that province, because even if he does break it, it makes it a bit tough. And oh, here comes a policy debate. Policy debates when the when the difference is two or less are actually actually interesting mind games. Oh, yeah. Especially early on when both players have a lot of honor, right? It's oh, really definitely. tough to figure out who's bidding what. Oh, and he's got Will. He bluffed him out there. So that's going to be a three-point honor swing. And uh, actually, maybe this is one of the ways that he, he starts applying honor pressure, right? Like, he intentionally... Yeah, I think that was a big mistake on Will's part. I think he should have gone for the tie. Really? At okay. most. But, hey, you know what? Now he can play with the perfect, perfect knowledge. Mm -hmm. Has that hand understanding there, so he's got to memorize everything, though. That's probably what he's trying to do right now. So, uh, uh, <laughs> Joe from Cincinnati says three Borderlands fortifications. Are you sure they're not 
Borderlands uh, defenders. You know, I just took <laughs> actually. That. You might you might be right. I have to check. <laughs> I have the paper deck list. I might have entered them in improperly. Let's see. I mean, because that would be pretty funny if it was three Borderlands fortifications. Oh, hey guys, these are these are the guys from Jigoku. How's it going, man? Good yeah, Joe, you guys from, join Joe's in. from Cincinnati, isn't he? Like a yeah, so is, so is Tenorum, yep. So I guess, Ronnie, you know that, like, uh, I'm glad to see that we have some uh, celebrities amongst the Elf Ever community. <laughs> okay, well, uh, <laughs> we'll see. When, when, a, when a Borderlands defender shows up, we'll see uh, whether or not it was actually the case. So uh, that was a... Assassination that got played on the Kyuan boy, I guess? Yeah. I think so. That's, uh. <laughs> oh, counter assassination. Wow, nice. But He's I got mean, that Forge Edict in his hand, though. He's decided put, he wants Putting to an use assassination it. on. Assassination by William when you were already at eight honor to begin with. It's a risky move, but I think, and I, I didn't, I didn't see it, but I think he would, he was actually pumping with the bonsai there. Uh, okay. Um, apologies, guys. We don't have uh, in-game audio today, so yeah. and, and we're we're surrounded by uh, X-wing players, X-wing players <laughs> screaming. There we go. So the four G deck counters the uh, assassinate. It's going to dishonor the Asako Diplomat. However, it doesn't really matter because if Asako Diplomat wins this one, then uh, he just gets to re-honor himself. Yeah, he might not even want to win it. He might just bow it. Use Benton's touch, bow it, and re-honor yeah. his guy. But we'll see. <laughs> there you go. Or it doesn't even need the Benton's touch. I forgot about the ability. Yeah. Phoenix is the only clan I never played. Right. Did, sorry, did we miss... Was he honored to begin with when he played the 4G dicks? Okay. I'm going to assume that he just re-honored him. He forged edict with this guy. Oh, with this guy? Yeah. And then he re-honored re it with... Uh, After winning a conflict. The soccer diplomat. Yeah. Okay. Because he didn't put the token on, so I was confused. Or maybe I was just looking away. No, it's quickly on and off. But okay. We got it. Bit hectic. Sorry, yeah, yeah. We're going to get up to speed right I've now. Got, I got this sweet overlay that was uh, designed by my partner, Travis. So when I'm trying to manage the cards on there, sometimes I miss the action on the table. That's okay, we get most of it. So back to that assassination, uh, I think on top yeah. of that, the reason why Will is open to playing it is that he, he's pretty much going to bid one or two from here on out, right. especially with that library up. Uh -huh. um, so he's hoping that that will help cover the honor difference. Yeah, that's interesting because um, I don't. I was going to ask you what the what the general plan for William is. Is he trying to break, or is he actually a scorpion? Or sorry, is he actually a <laughs> you got it there. Phoenix dishonor deck? Pretty much going for that scorpion style defensive. Uh, uh, okay. He's going to wear you out. He actually yeah. prefers the crab matchup. So it's going to be tough. But Shane has the favor, so that's going to help a lot uh, due, because of the palace. Right. Um, so yeah, we'll see what William can do about it. There you go. That's interesting. They they both passed their second conflicts. And one thing we didn't talk about the, I guess the one fate on the naive student is just for way of the crab protection. Yeah, um, big part of it. The other thing is board control. I mean, right. Will knows that it's going to be a long game for him, so right. On some of that advantage there. So here's an interesting scenario. We're going to see if, uh, well, he's definitely going to keep, but we're going to see if he doesn't win the favor this round, whether or not he still keeps Kanjo, because otherwise that thing's useless. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. Thanks, Joe. Totally forgot so, uh, about that. Joe uh, says that he could William boost, could have he could have boosted holding? the honor. Right. Um, it wouldn't have, oh, yeah, he won the ring, too, so that would have given him the favor. Big mistake on his part. A passive move and, you know, something that, uh, I guess, a... Uh, so I don't know if William, player, William is a uh, regular. Yeah, he player. is. He is. He is. Okay. It might be just the. Because that's definitely one of the one of the edge cases. Yeah, that's definitely one of the edge cases of of using the Phoenix Stronghold because a lot of people just use it to buff their guy. That's exactly or it. Yeah, debuff their opponent's guy. But yeah, uh, favor control uh, really important when it comes to using the Phoenix Stronghold as well. That's a big mistake. Joe's uh, definitely right on that one. Now we got uh, we got Kisada out. 
with three fake. Wow. I find that's typical from crap players. They, they tip, well, actually, no, they prefer to charge him out and give him for free with Iron I'm, Man I'm and all not, that. But I'm not sure if uh, Shane knows that William has a fate worse than death in his hand. Yeah. Or, sorry, in his deck. Uh, he must suspect it because of the 4G dicks. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it was a tight group yesterday, so I'm sure everybody was talking. Right. I don't think it'd be a surprise to him. So the bid was uh, two for both players. So honor remains a parity. And oh. first play is going to be a spyglass. Here it comes. Yeah. This is what I was talking about. Now he has the ability to uh, start bidding lower on his uh, his dials. Between this, this overlay thing's amazing. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. I mean, <laughs> that, that thing's amazing. I was watching the streams uh, last night. Um, just recapping, and I was like, "Wow, I didn't know you guys did that." So I yeah, really actually, love this. Uh, Travis, setup. Travis, uh, he uh, he spent a lot of time getting this stuff ready for for this weekend. It's smooth because you know one of the things is like, especially like you, like when for a lot of people that may not have uh, played a lot of L5R but are just getting into it, uh -huh. you know, watching watching stuff on screen. Uh, especially when it's on an overhead like this. It gives you a good overview of the cards, but if you don't know what the picture, like if you can't recognize cards from the pictures and know the text, it's really hard to follow stuff sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. But I was going to mention also, like between, uh, yeah, between the, did he go to two, four, six, eight, nine? Yeah. Sorry, between the, the Shrewd Yasuki and the Hita Kasada with the spyglass on it, and I was mentioning earlier when we had Shane's deckless on the screen, uh, Mountain Does Not Fall is a great combo with Spyglass as well. So we're probably going to see a lot of that this turn. Yeah, he ran that against me last night, yesterday. All the day. Mountain Does Not Fall Spyglass <laughs> combo? Yeah. Uh, and he had that Yusuke out right off the bat too. So it's going to be an interesting game. Might be, a, might be one that goes to the time. So, it w w so Will with uh, five honor left, like how does he get out of this honor deficit? Like how do you as a Scorpion player get out of honor deficit? Uh, it's easy for us. I mean, we got the box. But for Will, yeah. I think he's he's going to... I'm not surprised at the two bit, but I, I would be surprised if he keeps going um, any higher than that yeah. down the road. So he's just going to bid low and uh, rely on the library to help him draw. But that's the only uh, that's the only piece for him, right? Meanwhile, Shane has stuff like the Envoy, yeah. has the Shrewdusuki in play right now, uh, all those unicorn attachments that we were talking about earlier. I, I don't think he has Funeral Pyre in his hand, yeah. in his deck. Doesn't look like it. No, doesn't look like it at all. And one copy of uh, Imperial Storehouse. Well, remember that Phoenix has the uh, Shrine Maiden who would come and play and help right. him yeah. make good time on the draw. Is a Fate Worse Than Death a spell? It does not, no. That seems like a weird combination, putting Shrine, shrine Maiden in a deck that isn't, doesn't we, have a lot of Even when I was talking to him, I yeah. think about half of his deck uh, are spells, or it's just under half. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, we'll I mean, oh, when, oh, when oh, Disciples oh. of the Void comes out, I think definitely that's going to be, Shrine Maiden's going to be one of those cards that I think it's going to see a lot more play, but... So it looks like a Psycho Diplomat's going in solo? Yeah, solo on a military conflict and against Void Shameful too. Display. He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't go for the fate, so... I think that was more preventative move so that his own... Um, what, what's your opinion on a Void Conflict when your opponent, your opponent's only character with Fate on it has three Fate on it? I'd do it as a preventative measure just to prevent his, uh, from him smacking back at me right. and uh, removing a, a Fate token because that would, that would swing the board control big time. It's interesting. I don't, yeah, I was saying, uh, I was very surprised that he wasn't going to do that, but... There you go. So that's, there uh, goes Casada. Seven, seven uh, strength, and uh, Spyglass draws him a card. I suspect we're gonna see a uh, Mountain Does Not Fall. Seems like the perfect time to play it. Yeah. Also, wave the crab I just saw in Shane's hand. No good targets for it as of yet. Well, I mean, the, the Metling Mediator is actually not a not a bad. What's he doing? Oh. So he's he's using the the box to uh, oh, trigger Kisada. Kisada's ability. Yeah, yeah. 
got the Z1, you've got RAP still. Okay. RAP you can do after. You're on an actualistic policy. I'm like, how about Tom? What was Shane's first move? As the defender? Yeah. He may have passed. If he passed, I probably would have passed that. Yeah. That was uh, interesting. Because that would have resulted in Casada bowing. Right. And I'm, I'm, I'm surprised he passed because he had the shameful display and then he actually used it. But here's a fate worse than death. And that this is probably why he yeah. he didn't pass because yeah. he wanted to play that card. Yeah. So that's gonna that's gonna turn off Casada's ability. Of course. Yeah, he's gonna need to do something though because yeah. right now he's not winning and he wants to win that that void ring to remove another one off Casada. Yeah, because he's at zero with the dishonor. Right, here comes a charge. Vengeful Berserker, Vanguard Warrior. Vanguard Warrior. Sorry. That's okay. I don't play. I don't play crab either, so I don't. I don't remember. Uh, there you go. Yeah. See, this thing's good for all types of players. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So two. He's actually winning now, but here's a bonsai. He's gonna lose an honor. Now he's down to four. It's a four honor. Jeez. Okay. But that's gonna let him uh, trigger the void ring if he wants. Yeah. Well, you see the Benton's touch in the multiple court games in his right. hand right now. So I think if it can worse, you know, push comes to shove, but he's going to uh, boost. The Naive Student is not a Shigenja, is it? It isn't. No. Actually, I can look that up. Yeah, I barely see these. Yeah, it's a courtier scholar, so you can't even use the Benton's touch. Not yet. Yeah, you're right. I think this is one of the biggest um, critiques he had about his own deck. He's like, how can right. I not have more Shigenjas than you? So that'll be quickly rectified when the new pack comes out. Yeah, I mean, generally, if he's if he's truly a like a dishonored deck, right? He needs equal amounts of courtiers and Shigenjas to get like the four shames and the, as well as all the uh, the Shigenja spells. <laughs> I think. Uh, uh, I, I don't know whose turn it is to act right now, but if I was William, I'd just let this... Like, you're not going to break the province, right? No, I would just let it go. Yeah, and that's what happens. So, Void Ring triggers. William wins the uh, the fight, but doesn't break the province. So, let's see if he... Can you check his ability? Sure. The diplomat? Yeah, when he wins, he can either honor or dishonor a... Uh, yeah, he's not triggering it, though. Okay. Well, that's the... It's the kind of play that's a mistrigger, right? So if he doesn't... If he doesn't remember it, it's yeah. optional, so... Uh-oh. Looks like a second big mistake. Yeah. So it's hard to figure out where to put this chat box without it, like, blocking people's hand. I think it's good where it was. That's all right. Yeah, okay. Because it covers up the card that comes yeah. in on this no, side. No. So. Yeah. At least we can peek at his hand if you have it back. <laughs> so he's got to cloud the mind that he's shuffling. Charles yeah. has got a, got a way of the crap sitting there. Maybe Again, he, cloud maybe the mind. He can't phase. play it because there's no Shigenjo yeah, on his yeah. side. Dead card. If he waltzes into meditations after doing that, I feel sad. So that that was him putting the uh, the fate on the the Yusuke with the Vanguard Warrior. So if he if he probes another face down province, yeah. he runs into a yeah. Generally, which is why uh, I would wait until later. Now yeah. that being said, like you're also afraid of having the thing assassinated because actually assassinating a Vanguard Warrior is a. Uh, pretty appealing thing to do. I've thought right? about it a few yeah. times. No, I've done it multiple times because a lot of people, they wait until the very last yeah. minute to uh, use Vanguard Warrior because yeah. they're setting up an entire situation <laughs> where like, yeah, I'll just attack with that and, I, and after that I'll sack it and use it. But then but, you just assassinate it. Put it this way, if Kasada had nothing and uh, yeah. and you wanted to pull that right away, sure, but uh, Yasuki, just let it go. Yeah. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Phoenix isn't assassinating it for honor. Exactly. I mean, yeah, I, but I didn't think he was going to assassinate against a dishonor crab deck at uh, yeah. at eight honor either, right? So who knows? <laughs> yeah, let's see what happens. Of course, uh, 
I mean, if Shane declares two conflicts this turn, he no. can trigger the meddling mediator, but... See, I was, I was thinking Will might want to attack with just one character and then yeah. keep the other and grab Conjo Districts, the favorite for Conjo, di Conjo District, but I guess he's swinging with both. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to try to break instead, so let's see what happens. So it's going to make it tough because Shane's got the favor here. Yeah. <clears throat> and so that was the toughest part. He he had a Yasuki the entire game against me, so having two cards up, get to pick one. Doesn't sound like much, but it actually makes a pretty big difference. So what's that, five? Five versus two? Uh, three. He has a favor. Right, yes, thank you. Although he's two, putting four, two in his six, dice right there, nine. so maybe he doesn't even know. We'll see. You know, actually, it's funny. Last, uh, oh, court games. There you go. So on his naive student, probably. Yeah, he's gonna counter court, court games. games back. Yeah. 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 Last game on camera, we had a. Oh, what just happened there? I think she has an ability. You want to take a look? Uh, so the no, the meddling mediator's ability is only about the uh, the second uh, conflict. Oh, then I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Step in. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go take a look. Okay. okay. No, I'll take. I'll take so Victor's gonna head on over. See what happened there. Oh, never mind, Victor. So he's. I guess he's. He, Will was deciding um, who to dishonor on his okay. side. He decided to go with. Uh, okay. The student. Right. Because he. It's again. It's his choice, right? It was like his choice as to who to that, dishonor. That's really interesting because, um, well, after this matchup, he's going down to two honor. And uh, right. that's scary territory, even for a scorpion. So. so three, four, five. He's still at five because he got plus one from the meddling mediator, but minus two from the naive student. Five to three. Actually, that's interesting because I, I would have, I would have for sure, actually, I think. Yeah. One, one glory. Right, right, four. Okay. Barely winning. And then with the ornate fan came down. There we go. Yasuki, so that's five to four. Yep. Risky move. Oh, here he comes. Mountain does not fall. So I think that's going to let him uh, attack back. Yes. That's actually good because the air ring is out there. So if he, he, what he can do is he air rings, right? Well, well, more importantly, when he smacks back, he's gonna bring Casada, right? I'm not, oh no, sorry, he was on defense. Yeah, I apologize. yeah, yeah. Um, yep. But yeah, I mean, the air ring's gonna put a lot of pressure on him. Yeah, because now, now it's an unopposed conflict, right? He, he doesn't even have to reveal new problems. He just goes after public form air ring. That's exactly it. William loses two honor, one for undefended and one for... I think this might be game right here. Although he no, he doesn't go for it. He goes for the air. What is he doing? Actually, no, you know, this makes sense too. What? There's a keeper in the shit in the province. Oh, but this is game. You go for air, that's game. Is you're it? taking one. Yeah. You're not defending. That's another one. So he and goes to two. And then you're going to lose two from these guys dying. Yeah, man, he... I guess that just was a that. Um, interesting move okay. from uh, from Shane. I mean, I wonder, feel free to chime in, guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if any anyone in the chat can see like a different uh, line as to why Shane decided to go for the uh, Earth Ring instead of the Air Ring, because on the board it looks to me that looks to me that with the four honor that William has, uh, like Tony said. Lose two honor for the conflict between the undefended and the air ring, and then losing two honor for the two characters going away, and then, yeah. So Joe Pusitsani talks about uh, forfeit a maiden dismantles that strategy. That's, uh, He's saying with shrine maiden comes down. Yeah, so sure. that, that's true. Maybe he was just hedging his bets there, right? So that's a court games getting discarded, and then the keeper initiate uh, coming into play. If he, if William forgets to lose an honor, I'm gonna have to uh, remind him about it because I do believe it's mandatory. And you guys are doing a great job with that. 
Victor's gonna try to run across the floor now <laughs> between like 20 tables. <laughs> Look at him go. All right, and there we go. Down to one. You know, at this point, um, I'm pretty sure it's a game, but it will should at least just drop the Conjo District. See what gets him. I, I, don't, I really don't even know what's going to save him this round, to be honest. With how, many, with how many cards are in uh, William's hand? So between... He's got a bid one this turn. I see like five cards in his hand. Yeah. So he's got a bid one this turn. So between that and the Forgotten Library, he's going to see two new cards. Yeah, but I, I'd chuck the Kondo District at this yeah. point. I'm not sure what he's doing to keep yep. that. He's going to watch us later and be like, why are you hating on me, man? Nah, it's all right. It's just, you know, sometimes it's just nerves being on camera. Sometimes it's uh, s stuff that I've found personally that's things that look obvious when you're watching another person playing oh, it. Oh, absolutely. Just like, yeah. Completely. Well, like, like, like the air ring play that we were yeah. talking about, right? <laughs> yeah. well, you know, so, someone brought up, it's possible that it could have been countered, right? But sometimes sometimes it's better to just make the opponent have it, you know? But, yeah, with the... But see, now, Tony, you're, you're saying why you can get rid of the Contra District. He's flipped over a Solemn Scholar and a Sakasuki, and those don't put up any sort of... No. Like, they're better early on in the game, but, like, a Sakasuki now, when the game is almost over? Yeah, this should be game. He would have needed one of his big guns uh, yeah. to at least stand a chance. More likely Sukune, and pray that, uh, you know, Shane doesn't have a, a dishonoring card from his hand, perhaps a court game. Yeah. Well, he's going to attack military, so... Yeah, Weapon Taco it's, says... It's not even about losing the province at this yeah. point, Taco. Uh, you know, I'd say just defending against the... Just winning that first conflict is going to be huge. Yeah. So, we'll see. Maybe he has a couple of tricks up his sleeve. I'm going to guess the only thing that's going to save him is another... His second... His second A Fate Worse Than Death. Really, realistically, that's probably right. the only thing that's going to save him for this conflict. Um, yeah. I guess it's going to come down to the draw. I didn't see it in his hand, did you? Uh, he has two copies, I know that. Two so. copies of A Fate Worse Than Death? Yes. Doesn't look like he has it. I see some uh, against the waves. Yeah. But, yeah. This might be a shake, so... So Shane, Shane has the first opportunity to, uh, to declare conflict. I think he just pushed hard military air. That's it, against public forum. So he's going to start with Haruma's skirmisher. Yeah. Ouch. That's uh, just making sure that he. <laughs> yeah. Making sure he. Uh... Yeah, making sure that uh, William's best defender doesn't actually get to participate. So I see, uh, yeah, stuff like against the waves. I see a cloud of mine too. I mean, you could put that on Hikasada. You could put that on. Now this is this is interesting. So if you put, if you can you put cloud the mine on. Uh, yep. Can you put cloud the mine on a skirmisher that entered play this turn? It would still get covert, right? Because the ability is different from the. That's a good question. So I've never yeah. been really good at the rules. What do you guys think? Anybody have the answer there? Clouding the skirmisher, would that yeah. have uh, prevented the covert? I don't think so, but... Yeah. But, yeah, mil military air. And you just go after public forum, yeah. There we go. Yeah, public forum, everybody. There you go, 10 Aram yeah. has uh, confirmed. Yeah, I would think so, because it's not part of, like, the... It's sort of the same reason why you can... Uh, apparently, you can cloud the mine something and then still use Yakuni's ability on it. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Joe says, send everybody. I'm not everybody. sure. Yeah. I'm not All sure in. if that was a uh, Gary Oldman quote there. That, that means. Everyone! <laughs>
So uh, while we're waiting for this thing to conclude, like, uh, based on who's still in the tournament, who's your uh, favorite to win this one? Because you got the Korean Hatamoto man <laughs> from my Philadelphia. Buddy, Ronnie. Yeah. 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 Um, I actually went with him to PAX, and he was he had a demoralizing first round, uh, first day, I mean, um, on Proving Grounds. And he was a little demoralized. He came with a really fancy deck, and, you know, overnight, we, we had a chat, and uh, he, he went... He went with the meta and just came out as Hatamoto uh, on day two. He came so up, that, he came that, up that, swinging. You guys came up with that Korean Scorpion deck? No, you know the one he's playing today? No, that wouldn't be the same one he brought to PAX. He brought a different one. Right. Um, but yeah, that was, uh, we went there. I, I would I would probably put my money on Ronnie right now, but um, you never know. Stranger yeah. things have happened. Hopefully, hopefully we see more of that. I mean, we saw a version of that deck uh, just just this past uh, tur uh, sorry this past round. He was playing against the uh, Unicorn Challenger, and they're not exactly the same, but it's similar enough. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. That was a charge for the the Heated Guardian, which is going to give a plus two plus two buff to whatever. Yeah, Will's not in a good place right now. Uh, policy debate. <laughs> He's like, yeah, come on, bid something. Come on. It's James. It's like, I'm not even going <laughs> to. Oh, you want me to actually bid the down? Okay, sure. Oh, I thought William was going to commit honor suicide there for a second. <laughs> well, it might that, be, that been it might be the honorable thing to do, it. just seppuku at this yeah. point. All right. See, that makes it tough. That makes it really tough. We just saw his hand there. He's got more guys to bring down if he needs it. Does he have it? Yeah, and yeah. he shakes. That's yeah. it. Okay. He That's... just wanted to know. All right. Uh, so well played by Shane. Um, I'm I'm sad to see William get knocked out because I thought, like all things considered, his uh, his uh, deck choices were interesting. Just uh, something like a Phoenix Phoenix Scorpion Dishonor deck is not something that I see a lot of people the way they build their phoenixes because obviously unicorn is one of the most popular uh, splashes for that clan but that being said i mean shane's going to go on to the semi